Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Hi, I'm okay. Good news. Good news. Now, since our previous episode, where we talked about feeding our dogs animals, yes. Um, we seem well. I was just We going asked, to say, we asked, for, we asked for opinions, didn't we? Yes, we did. Um, and I was just going to say we've opened a can of worms, but I don't think that's very vegan. So, what's the can of spaghetti? Um, can of spaghetti, yeah. We've opened a can of spaghetti. So one of the responses, and we we'll keep it anonymous. Um, one of the uh, responses says uh, there are nutritionally complete vegan dog and cat foods available. So why would you choose to continue to kill other animals because you desire a pet? This is speciesism since you are placing the value of your pet's life above the hundreds of farm animals, hundreds of farmed animals, sorry, you will feed them. It was a kick in the guts to hear this view expressed on a vegan podcast. And also, I also consider it to be a parent's responsibility to raise their children with good ethics and morals. When we know better, we can do better. Perhaps you'd consider maintaining a vegan household even if your children choose to eat meat when out. So, lots of valid points there. Can't argue that it is speciesism. Absolutely. Um, absolutely is speciesism by feeding the dog other animals. Yes. Um, there's a few caveats to add to that, though, from my point of view. The first one is that we had the pet, we had the dog before we were vegan. My personal opinion is I don't think we should have pets because... You shouldn't own another animal. I know there's the argument around rescue, etc. But my personal opinion is, uh, don't have pets because you're still effectively the owner of that animal at your. Yeah, um, no, I agree with it. Yeah, so Same here. We, we had our we had our pet before. You've you've had your dog years and years well, and years, and, don't and, you? The, and the, then then you know there was the, then the argument that. Um, my wife was vegan. She had a pet, but so did her family, and she was the only vegan in her household. As for the kids, it's a similar situation. If we'd been vegan before we had the kids, we would have brought them up vegan. I, I would. <laughs> I would absolutely be raising my kids vegan. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'd be raising my kids vegan without a doubt. Yeah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't even be a question. They'd be no. fully, fully on board now. No, we'd have a, we'd have a completely vegan household. But given that, well, for me, when I went vegan, my kids were seven and ten, and my wife and I didn't think it was fair to impose that on them at that age. We wanted you it to be, them. we wanted it to be their decision. Yeah, you can give them the information. Yes. You know, but you can't force them to do something. No, no. Well, I don't think you can. No, we didn't think that would be fair. Um, and they just end up resenting us for it. So yeah. we decided not to. So what I'd really like is I'd love to hear from parents in a similar situation with us, especially parents who've gone vegan when their kids were older and how did you how did how did you make that work basically yeah. because when they're kids even you know when they're babies even if they're maybe one or two you could still turn them vegan at that point because they're still learning and and you know they're not really eating proper food and everything so that's not such a big deal but so if you were a parent of kids that age and you've got an experience of how to get them over the line i would love to hear it because there's nothing i'd love more yeah. than having a vegan household and from from my personal and i will be i will be open about this um it's no secret in our household my youngest has it's not an eating disorder it's an eating phobia it's called arfid a-r-f-i-d stands yeah. for avoidant restrictive food intake disorder um, it basically comes from um, a fear of food, of trying new foods. So she has a very, 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 very tiny comfort zone of food, but of anything within her life. So she 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 only watches certain TV programs 
like she just focuses on that because she knows where she's comfortable. She she's very creative. She does a lot of drawing. She stays in the same comfort zone of drawing yeah. the same things. She's very good at those things because that's all she does. But she also only eats certain foods that are, um, I think they're known as like beige foods. So oh. pizza, pizza, tins of spaghetti, tins of tomato soup, um, yogurt, biscuits. You won't even eat cake. So you lick the icing off the cake. So if we if we say to her, you now can't eat yogurt, cheese. The things, some of the things that she likes. One of the few things she likes, yeah. One of the few things she likes. We have a big problem. And we're yeah. already concerned as parents about what she is eating now. So that on its own, for our youngest, mm. we can't do that. We no. have to get, we have to allow her to eat what she wants. Otherwise, she won't be here anymore. <laughs> so it's not about making her vegan, educating her on being vegan. It's about keeping her safe and keeping her alive. And yes. our other daughter, who isn't vegan, she has undiagnosed ADHD. She has, you know, a, a special educational need, but you know, for whatever term we're to use. Um, and she finds it, she finds those sorts of things difficult to to fathom. She understands our vegan argument. She understands the information that we have given her, but I'm not going to force it upon her because, like you said, it will only force her to resent us and and not want to be around us so yeah. we have to allow her to do what she wants to do in her own time she's reduced what she does eat she i know this isn't the place that she only eats chicken now and dairy but we can't force it any further otherwise it will just be a nightmare yeah so, like you said if anybody wants to give us some advice i'm all for it yeah yeah please do but if 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 that person that messaged or anyone else is offended by the way we parent or have a pet, then I can only apologise. Well, I, I don't know if we need to apologise. I think I think we've explained that's that's the situation. So, you know, it, take it or or don't take it. It's, you know, yeah. in an ideal world, we'd all be vegan and it would be great. But. Yeah. We we came to it late, and we're we're just trying to catch up as best we can. And in fairness, we've said quite enough times on this on this podcast that the whole thing around veganism is doing as much as practicably possible to reduce animal suffering. Yes, that's it. So I am. Yeah, I am doing everything I can, and if I can do more, I will do more. Yeah. So there we go, listener. Tell us uh, tell us who we need to speak to and what we need to do. So that we can um, we can get that bit sorted out. Uh, is our social media department able to post a link to the, an Arfid video I sent you? Then yes. Maybe maybe some people can watch that and understand what. Yeah, yeah. Doing. I'll um, I'll share that. I'll, I'll add that in the show notes. Thank you very yes. much. Um, now, Wes, you're wearing a, a t-shirt with Norway on it. Is this to do yeah. with the the fact it's the Eurovision semi-final this evening? Um, let's say yes. Yeah. Let's okay. go with yes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, good. I remember a few years ago, before I was vegan, we used to we used to do Eurovision. We used to watch it quite a lot. Have a little. Oh yeah, little I love Eurovision. And there, there there came a couple of years where we try and get um, foods foods from around the Euro European countries that were competing. Yeah, as party food. Now we're going to have to veganize it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I am watched. I am watched Eurovision for like years now because of my previous job. Oh so, yes. Now this is my first year back. So oh well, be... you will. You have to watch it this year because I can't watch it because I'll be on. I'm working nights this weekend, <laughs> so enough. I'll be traveling to work. So I will have to miss it. So you will have to watch it in my place because oh, I've watched it all the years that you've missed it. Fair enough. Yeah. I'll be there. It's awful. It's goddamn awful. Oh, it's you know. great fun. It, it, no, it's it's awful, but it's great for sure. But yeah, it's great fun. Great fun. So, anyway, who have we got on tonight? May I ask? Uh, yes, you may ask, and uh, you'll have to wait, just like the listener. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. 
you know, so I in the only, meantime, I'm only, I'm only number two, and I, you know, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, just, I, used to, I used to press the record button. Now I just have to turn up. Oh, shit. Should I press the record button? <laughs> <laughs> oh, magic. Right. Well, listener, we've asked for your help. So please get in touch. Find us on Instagram at How I Vegan Podcast or send us an email. How I Vegan Podcast at gmail.com. <laughs>no, not at all. I love what you're doing and I'm really pleased to be here. Awesome. So um, I mentioned you've just been signed up for work in Dubai. Tell, tell us about that. What's the what's the story there? Yeah, I mean, basically, I um, right now I'm in England. Um, unexpectedly, it was a visa thing. So I've been here sorting that out. And while I've been here, I've been, you know, just... Um, putting my master plan into action actually <laughs> so you know the plan was always yeah exactly the plan was always to go global I mean I grew up in England so I'm British but I um went to America at a really young age and I had the opportunity to sign with Motivate Talent in Dubai and I took it and that's it's really as simple as that I just um would love to work out there you know so sure. yeah Okay. That's the story. It's pretty simple. There's no like <laughs> big like firework story behind yeah. it. Okay. So I, I I said that you're a model and actress. Which came first? What was the what's the what's the background? Good question. Um, modeling actually at age seven for a school uniform campaign for Tesco. So wow. everyone in England knows Tesco. <laughs> America yeah. doesn't. Um, no. So actually, it feels really good to say that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, my dad worked for Tesco. And um, again, I had the opportunity and I really enjoyed it, but I really didn't think much of it. You know, I was seven years old. Um, and then as a teenager, I dabbled a little bit. And then it was when I graduated from London College of Fashion that I had the opportunity to work in Miami Beach with Michelle Pommier models and I took it, you know, and I didn't look back. Nice. So yeah. uh, when, you did that, <laughs> when you did that first modeling uh, campaign for Tesco then, did you get paid? Yeah. Did you? That's, that's seven. A really, that's, a really, no, that's a really good question. I actually have no idea. Oh. Um, okay. That's like a really paid in pick question. and mix or something. And I've never, yeah, probably pick and mix. <laughs> um, I never even asked my parents about that, possibly. Yeah, yeah they might owe you a few quid. Yeah, <laughs> I probably owe them more than they owe me. <laughs> <laughs> so we can uh, just put it like you can balance it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess from that point, then you've got the uh, you've you've got your foot in the door. But how does how does I'm I'm not asking for me clearly. How do how do you get started in modeling like? I was listening to a podcast the other day and David yeah. Gant was on as a guest and he said uh -huh. basically somebody entered his photo in a modeling competition on this morning on ITV and he oh, won wow. and that was the start of his modeling career but I'm conscious that cannot be the same as everybody so what's the yeah. what are the sort of first steps that you that you take yeah, I mean, for my, you know, it's interesting because there's there's no like concrete format I mean there's a lot of different ways um being scouted for myself i did a job um for a magazine called hip hop connection and that was through a stylist that i knew so it was really that and then um i interned what's called work experience here um when i was doing my degree in new york at good morning america on um the abc network and you know, I just met people. I met like a couple of girls that were with really great agencies, photographers. Um, 
And the opportunity was really born out of that. So I would say for myself, contacts, just, you know, they recommended the agency and my photo was sent to the, okay, to answer your question directly, my photo was sent to the agency and they contacted me, asked for a meeting and I went in and that's it. Fantastic. Yeah. But there's a lot of different avenues. Easy that, Matthew. We just need to get on it now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we'll you just, need to get uh... on it. We just need to know you <laughs> some, some models or stylists to us. That's number yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing holding us back. That's what and it is. There must be demand I'll put you for, in touch. for bold middle-aged men yeah, who are a... overweight with beards. I think that's a niche in the market. <laughs> no, you're not overweight. You don't look overweight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got a good filter on this camera. Right. Um, <laughs> so how does the... How does the vegan thing tie in with that then? Because a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of, not a lot, but modeling campaigns, you kind of, I'm guessing you do what you're told and you, you know, right. like, right, here's the clothes that we want you to wear or here's the product that right. we want to, to model or, you know, whatever. How does that yeah. work? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, for myself, um, gosh, uh, I guess I have to answer this in like, different parts so mm -hmm. when I first started I wasn't a complete vegan I was a vegetarian um and well for example you know if it's a product where I need to eat um I obviously can't do it if it's meat or dairy or fish or whatever um and then in terms of clothing I mean yeah you know I've aligned as I evolved from vegetarian to vegan I aligned with more vegan brands um like my first skincare campaign was this beautiful plant-based skincare um but yeah I mean it's it's a hard, hard one honestly because mm. with some clothes yeah. I mean you know it's yeah um, it's uh, work <laughs> yeah this is it you, you you're not in a position to turn down work but also you've right. got your ethics as well that's um, yeah that's quite a yeah. situation to be in yeah yeah it is I mean I, I definitely I mean you know as far as food goes and like skincare and beauty and everything I have really aligned with a lot of plant-based vegan companies and brands but um you know with clothing I mean it's definitely evolving there's definitely more designers you know that are taking a stance now um but it's obviously got a long way to go mm. right so yeah yes Did I even was... answer that question? <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was good um, i was just i was just thinking i i saw a clip a couple of days ago i think from the was it the met gala earlier this week where yeah. stella mccartney yeah, said yeah stella mccartney said uh, I think Ed Sheeran was it who who had vegan shoes on. Um, yeah, she's a uh, is she vegan or vegetarian? Stella McCartney, I can never remember. But I she doesn't use animal vegan. products, does she? Products. Yeah, exactly. She's yeah. amazing. I mean, it's her stuff is you know it's high end and it's beautiful and you know she's definitely a leader. Okay. So, I mean, you you, you okay. said you said that you started yeah. off as vegetarian. So how did they how how what's your vegan story? How did you um travel yeah yeah I mean I started at 14 so I mean it was really as innocent as um me being aware of my weight you know at the precious age of 14 and I mm. associated red meat with um fat really I mean it was like that simplistic you know as a 14 year old's thoughts um and that just evolved quite rapidly to me um cutting out poultry and then it was really when I was in Miami that I cut out, not that I was eating a lot of dairy, but I cut out dairy completely and mm -hmm. evolved into being a vegan. And then um, I also cut out alcohol, actually, um, which was not a cut. It was, it was just a very organic um, choice in 2016. My boyfriend at the time didn't drink alcohol. So it's like, you know, I was having a glass of wine at dinner by myself and it just wasn't as enjoyable. And, yeah. you know, I said to myself, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to stop. And I was, you know, I started drinking at age 11. So, I mean, I definitely have my fair share. 
Um, mm. And I did, and I don't miss it, which is really surprising. Yeah. Welcome to the club. I've been I've been sober for four years now, I think. Yeah. When you were 14 right. as well, Wes? When I was 14, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I, I, I feel the same. I don't miss it at all now. Um, but yeah. yeah, and I'm right, I'm so surprised that I don't. Like, mm. you know, I actually feel I feel better. Yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah. when you go out and people are drinking and they're like the next day, oh, my God, you know, um, I don't feel good. And I'm like, oh, I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should have seen the day of you last night. I, I wasn't. <laughs> That's yeah. the best bit, isn't it, seeing everyone else getting a complete mess and like we're just sat there going, yeah, it's all fine. Yeah. yeah exactly and I don't you know I don't need alcohol if I want to dance on a table or you know be playful and silly mm. right 100% must be the vegan uh, superpower uh, yeah yeah we just know how to have fun <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the what was the bit that pushed you from vegetarian to vegan then what was the yeah um well I mean again I mean you know at that age it was really to do with health oh, okay fine. And yeah. weight yeah it really was I can't claim to be so aware of you know the planet and everything and the animals um at that age and then everything else came because yeah I don't think you know you're able to not be aware of everything once you start eating that way you know it just mm -hmm. changes how you look at things yeah, absolutely. I mean, my initial right. reason was the environment, and but then yeah, yeah. you start looking into it more and more, and you realise yeah. actually, do you know what? Um, for me now, it's it's the animals rather than the yeah. environment that's definitely yeah. the number yeah. one. Like you say, yeah. once you start finding out, and you go further and further down the, you dig further and further and deeper and deeper, and you're like, oh my god, I cannot believe <laughs> what is going on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I know. Yeah, it, it's um, yeah. You just want to shout it out and just let everyone know, but you know. <laughs> that's why we're yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, that's and that's why I wanted to be on this show because I absolutely love what you're doing, and it's so important. God bless you for that. Okay, um, uh, <laughs> so what's been the what's been the biggest struggle for you as a as a vegan? Yeah, the biggest struggle. Um, gosh. You know, I think when I'm in remote places and, you know, there's a lack of options, right? That's an obvious one. Um, you know, when I'm not at a vegan restaurant and although it's getting so much better now, um, you know, when you're at a restaurant and you've got to put the sides together to make a play, I think we've all been there at some <laughs> point. Um, you know, airports, um, and I'm specifically talking to JFK <laughs> in New York. Um, <laughs> they just, you know, we just need more healthy options at the airport. I think, you know, I'd love to support a program that could do that. Actually, my local juice um, shop in New York, um, Juice Press, I would give them a shout out because they're doing really good stuff. They had a pop-up at JFK, um, but it didn't stay permanently, so... Oh, yeah there's there's yeah. people out there i think that want to do it it's just you know commercial right yeah. commercially it's viable. Yeah. Um, it. yeah so i think you know just really the obvious ones at the start perhaps people's attitude um i i found that when i did say i was vegan i would sometimes feel a little defensiveness from people that were, weren't vegan almost mm -hmm. like i was saying that you know, I think I'm better than them, which I never am saying. Well, we are. Um, you know, I never forced this trip, but we are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we never okay. say it. We never say it out loud. Not we say it out. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, but I really, I think that it's definitely changing. I think it's yes. changed a lot. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Did you, um, did you find any, um, any problems with friends and family? Did it like because you have any like barriers to cross with them or or was everybody quite accepting of it? Yeah, I mean my friends have been phenomenal. They they would only take only go to vegan restaurants with I mean my friends are just incredible and they, you know, were so open and wanted to actually know more. Um 
And my mom has been phenomenal. She has been so open-minded, you know, and this is obviously, you know, they grew up in a completely different generation when it was, you know, I think, especially in England, I'm finding, um, yeah, I mean, she's like cooked delicious vegan meals um, and we've ate them together and she's just really open. My father, um, you know, he's a real Sunday roast type of dad. <laughs> so he's he's definitely really supportive, but um, got a long way to go there. <laughs> Six days a week. But yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Um, but overall, I mean, just incredible. Just really, <clears throat> really, yeah, I'm thankful for the people in my life. Brilliant. Happy That's good. <laughs> Uh, did you notice any anything change when you when you went vegan, either physically or mentally? Yes, I mean my entire life. Like my uh, physically, I leaned out. I mean, not that I was like overweight, but I just noticed my body just naturally leaning out um, without me trying, and I wasn't as congested. Uh, my skin just seemed to glow. Mentally. Um, happy you know just energized I mean I rarely get ill if I do I can pinpoint it you know that comes with the self-awareness also I guess and the connection to your body through eating this way um just just feel good you know overall like mentally like clear clarity mm. um grounded I started yoga at the same time that I became vegan so I was, you know, really kind of doing a whole um, holistic transformation. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. In, inside and out. Brilliant. Yeah, inside and out. Exactly. Because it's interconnected. So, you know, mm. I mean, you really are what you eat. And I think um, eating this way just supports that, you know, like food is connected to your mood, right? So, yeah. Yeah. When you eat clean, you feel good. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. So where do you get your protein from? Right. So I get my protein. I mean, I do um, shakes. So I do smoothies with um, plant-based protein. And then, you know, quinoa, um, tofu, chickpeas, beans. Um, avocados have protein, like cauliflower, broccoli. Um, what else has protein? I mean hemp seeds pumpkin seeds cashews so i mean i really eat um what's like natural i don't eat like vegan junk food right yeah, yeah. but it's not in short, and that's where it's, I get not, it's not in short supply either is it right exactly yeah <laughs> no <laughs> yeah especially now like now that it's super commercial <laughs> yeah Yes, that's it. Have, yeah. have you noticed a difference between the US and the UK? Because I know you spent quite a lot of time in both. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's a really good question. I'm actually battling with that right now. Um, the thing is, though, you know, I mean, I lived in Miami Beach, which is healthy, and also New York, so they really don't re represent, yeah. you know, like your middle yeah. America stereotype. Um, the difference is there's not as much organic food here, and it's just my opinion, <laughs> coming from New York, don't forget, it's just not as healthy. Um, so I'm struggling with that. Oh, okay. Like a lot of the supplements, yeah, the, the supplements are a little more synthetic here, I'm finding. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, the choices. Yeah. So that that's really the main difference. Okay. Which is surprising okay. me. Yeah. Yeah, I would have thought it would have been the other way. Maybe that's just my... Um uh just a just an assumption uh, well clearly it's right. an assumption isn't it <laughs> yeah exactly but also i think again that's why i said you know um i lived in miami beach in new york so they are obviously very cosmopolitan very very different to like you know if you were to go to like alabama yeah in america for example yeah. so it really does like much like england so it really does depend where you're located right yeah yes yeah i think some of those towns where you've got a population of about 55 people or something and one yeah dinner or something yeah you you might find yourself struggling mightn't you but yeah exactly yeah, yeah. like big time yeah yeah <laughs> okay 
So <laughs> what's the best thing about being vegan for you? Uh, everything. Um, just the connection that I have to my body, really. I mean, that's really, it. it's really allowed me to become self-aware, you know, and then obviously that's the energy that I take out into the world. Um, mm -hmm. And then that connects to being aware of, you know, the animals, the planet, other human beings. But, it, you know, this is really, for me, being like a self-love journey. I love that. Yeah, it sounds so cliche, but it's, <laughs> but it's but it's true, you know, however cliche it sounds. <laughs> and why not? You know, everyone everyone's uh, I think a lot most people have answered that in different ways. Mm. Really? Different, yeah. yeah. Um we've had a lot of what's the what's the best thing about being vegan? Well I'm I've got a clear conscience. <laughs> I'm saving animals and that, but you know, it's absolutely, you know, if it, this that that feeling that we have is very important because it's that's what keeps us going, isn't it? Yes. Well, absolutely. And the thing is, you know, that if we could all feel that level of self love, then mm. imagine how different the world would be. Because I take that self love into my daily life, so I take that, you know, when I see other humans when I see animals when I see you know how I feel about the how I feel about my body is how I feel about the environment you know yeah. so it's it's all interconnected um yeah I mean it starts you know if you're not loving yourself and your body and your mind then how are you gonna what are you taking out into the world you know and yeah, I think we're really right. seeing that now right yeah yeah so you know and then that you know obviously extends to the animals the planet mm -hmm. the, yeah yeah, and if and if you're eating someone that's been murdered and kept in a terrible situation, you kind of you can absorb that stress Absolutely. that they were under at the time they were murdered as well. Right, and, and that, they've again, said that. You take that out into the world. Absolutely, absolutely, that anger, that that fear, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's been studies on that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is it, and like you say, it, the the world at the minute is not a not a pleasant place for a lot of people. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, we we need a bit of um, self love to to start off with, and then um, take that out into the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, multiply it. There's nothing better than a hunk of prime Labrador steak, wonderfully marbled. And that is almost entirely dependent on how it's produced. Elwood's organic dog meat has complete control of this entire journey. So I'm here at Elwood's farm to find out a little more about it. Welcome to Elwood Farms. Thank you very much, Elwood. I hear you do a bit of barbecuing. I do, a little bit of barbecuing every now and then, yes. From a chef's point of view, consistency is key for everything. It doesn't matter if it's a Rottweiler ribeye, a Pyrenees mince, or a lab sirloin. You can always tell when the dog comes from a place where it was well reared. And every step has to be right, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, you should see these guys! So, from an Elwood's point of view, there's complete traceability. Absolutely. Unrivaled traceability, so it's fine. Every single piece of dog meat? Yeah, from pub to farmer's market. Everything the dog's been fed? Everything about it. For each dog? Yeah. Only Marks and Spencer's and Whole Foods do this. Where else could people order from? From ElwoodDogMeat.com. That's E L W O O D DogMeat.com. For top quality meat from dogs for people. Meat that's local, sustainable, and humanely harvested. There's only Elwood's organic dog meat. <laughs> they seem pretty friendly, don't they? It's more responsive to me than my kids, to be honest. <laughs> you now is it sure okay <laughs> anyway, i like i like we, this i like the duality we, we, we have, take it in terms of the question no what we're doing we've said we, that all the way along we take it in terms of the question no, i love it i love things. it it's very intimate <laughs> and personal and yeah <laughs> okay okay i'm ready all right what's your favorite vegan product at the moment so 
Um, can this be anything like food or does it have to be food based? No, definitely not. Whatever all. you like. Okay. So Up Circle Beauty, which is British and yeah. it's incredible. It's doing great things for the environment. It's coffee based and they actually go around um, different coffee um what do you call them like coffee shops i guess at the end of the day and they use their coffee beans to um up circle <clears throat> is what they call it and yeah they, they, the skincare is great and um they're obviously vegan and what they're doing for mm. the environment is fantastic so oh, yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. and i just That's discovered cool. their line and i'm loving it <laughs> fantastic so uh yeah. tina in our last episode mentioned up circle as well so i think if we keep no tagging, way yeah i think if we keep tagging really? them, we might we might be on for some freebies wes <laughs> exactly that's incredible wow yeah well they deserve it excellent they deserve it they that's are fantastic good. and i first actually discovered them um at whole foods in new york yeah yeah okay they oh, so they're, global, well. then. they're global yeah they're, i mean yeah they're global yeah okay. yeah that's good all right. And is there a particular food product that you're particularly partial to at the minute? What am I partial to? Oh, gosh. Um, what am I partial to? <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, I know. Okay. So there's the. You, you know what? I'm really like eating actually every day goji berries. Oh, goji berries. That's my little snack. Yeah. What are they? These little about? berries. Yeah, they're like little, well, you have to try them now. Yeah. Little red berries, um, and they're packed with antioxidants. I mean, this, this are very, they're a little, I guess, for some people, they might be a bit bitter, but yeah, they're delicious. Goji berry. Ah. Yeah. E O J. Oh, come on, Matthew, I... I thought you were a man of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, gonna, I've never had gonna... one, but I, I've not heard of them. You know, you've heard of them, right? So, yeah, goji berries um, and then pomegranate seeds. I love snacking on. Mm. Yeah. I love those. Um, and then there's these little bars, actually. <laughs> um, this is very British. Deliciously Ella. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. So there's these carob and orange oat bars that I'm absolutely loving. Yeah. That I got my yeah. mum on too, yeah. Brilliant. That's her little treat. <laughs> right. I've just seen Sainsbury's yeah. do goji berries, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go down there tomorrow and get some. Yes. Yeah, and let okay. me know. <laughs> so um so what advice would you give to someone coming to you as those that's wanting to that's wanting to make that change? Like what would you what would you say to them? Right. I would say start slow, um, you know, rather than say, okay, well, I'm, you know, eating all this meat and dairy and everything, and the next day I'm going to be vegan. I, I would, my my personal advice would be start slow and make sure you eat, like, proper food because there's definitely vegan junk food also. So, yeah, focus on, you know, healthy food, vegetables, fruits, you know, everything that I said earlier, um, mm. that would be my, you know, basic advice. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. Who's your vegan inspiration? Um, my vegan inspiration is a friend um, that is just phenomenal. Um, she has been a vegan from a child. And I learned a lot from her about nutrients and um, just, you know, fermenting food and um, different types of food and just the benefits. So I, I was learning from her long before I even like, you know, evolved into a full vegan. So right. she's been an inspiration. Yeah. Through the whole journey, which is really right. nice. Yeah. Right. Do you want to say a name and give her a shout out? Yes. Lisa love I love you and appreciate you how's that <laughs> loving that lot <laughs> <laughs> and she's British you gotta yeah. tell your friends you love them girl. You, have huh? you have to tell your friends you love them 
yeah you have to friends are incredible they're just like yeah. they yeah. make life so much better Completely. True. um okay yeah. oh sorry i was going to jump in then it's your question was see we we get it wrong all the time. <laughs> um, have, you, have you got a favorite uh, vegan venue or restaurant Oh, yes, I have um, 11 vegan restaurants. Um, I went there for my birthday last year. It's 11 Madison Park in New York City. And they actually have a really incredible story. It's um, Chef Daniel Hum. And they were a regular restaurant before the pandemic. They transitioned to full vegan after the pandemic and they were they're three michelin stars which is incredible for a vegan restaurant Absolutely. and um yeah they were once the best restaurant in the entire world um so i felt really proud as a vegan that they that this chef you know felt so strongly about being plant-based that he took that leap of faith you know because i mean and you can imagine like he would he had like followers and everything you mm. know that went dedicated diners that you know used to go there um when he was meat based and fish based and now it's 100% plant based and it's just um a food gasm experience <laughs> that's what i have to call it <laughs> wow like there's no other way to ex- Explain how it makes you feel. <laughs> Gasm. That's some, nice. That's some yeah. Thing yeah. That <laughs> it's that good. It's just incredible. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I love that. We've is. um, <laughs> we've we've just set up a Google map, uh, which has got all the recommendations by our guests. Uh, oh yeah. So um, it's definitely not a rip off of Happy Cow, but um, we've. Oh, yeah. um, uh, we we just uh, set that up last week, so we'll add eleven Madison Park to it. Is, yes, is that the place that was on the Netflix series where they did yes. the um, yeah? Is it the stuff with the twins? Is it that one? Yeah, I I saw that series like about a month ago, I think it was, or a few weeks ago. Mm. Yeah, that's the one. I was like delighted when they were on there. Yeah, that's that's it. And that's the market I used to go to also, Union Square, Farmer's Market. Oh, wow. Yeah, where they go and get everything. Yeah, that's them. Brilliant. I can't remember the name of the oh, program now, but it was um, it was really interesting. Yeah, what was it? It was really interesting. I know. Oh, we have to find the name of it's it. It's going to bug me. Let me just have a look through. Yeah, have a look. This um, is my editing practice. <laughs> so I'd be really interested to read that guide that's a great idea well you can find it on our link tree so if you go to our um instagram page there's a, a link yeah. uh click on that okay. and there's a link in there to go to the google map okay i'm gonna do that and there's actually hey am i allowed to give more than one restaurant oh yeah there's no there's yeah. no limit Okay, so there's another one in New York called ABCV, and they are also fantastic. But 11 Madison Park is like the best ever. ABCB? Yeah. Ooh. So ABC. Yeah. And then a B. And then the letter V. Yeah, because they have like different, um, different restaurants, yeah. and that's the vegan oh. one. Okay. All right. Well, we'll check that it? one out as well. Yeah, check it out. Awesome. Okay. Good. All right. Right now, then, this is our final question. Oh. Um. Already, I know, and it stems from the term uh, "vistopia," which is, uh, if you haven't um, heard of it before, it's uh, the the uh, the anguish that vegans feel living in a non-vegan world. And okay. you know, we uh, we were finding ourselves down in the dumps quite a lot at the um, but, but exact for exactly that reason. So we started asking yeah. our, all our guests uh, this last question: Do you have hope for the future? Yes, I do. Because without hope, I mean, what do we have? Um, and I have hope for many reasons. Actually, um, I've seen I've seen it get better. So you're just talking in terms of being vegan, right? Or just in mm. general? 
I mean, predominantly vegan, but also general, yeah. Yeah, general. Um, well, I, I do, because I do believe strongly and firmly that there is more love than hate in this world. And I guess, mm -hmm. you know, it applies to humans as much as animals, right? Mm -hmm. um, I know that I've witnessed myself how many more people are starting to eat plant-based and be vegan. There's definitely change. Yeah, I have a lot of hope, actually. I have a lot of hope. Fantastic. I think I things that. are going to get better. Yeah. yeah, I really do. Because there is well, way more well, love as well. Answer. Huh? Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it gives me a bit of hope for an evening. <laughs> yeah, there is. There's, there's <laughs> definitely more love. And also, you know, I'm a firm believer in just being the change, right? And just yeah. taking that out into the world and... You know, even, I mean, even conversations with my mom, I mean, my mom is eating less meat and, mm -hmm. you know, just, yeah. just little, little things. I mean, it might be small. It might even seem like it's insignificant, right? mm -hmm. like, oh God, but it's all change. It's all, it's all moving forward. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we've kind of finished the, the normal questions that we asked, but I wanted to ask about the uh, modeling and acting a bit more what, what's next for you then so you said about you've been signed up in Dubai but what's the what's day to day like for you day to day wow good question um it's very varied so day to day there's two types of days so it would be what I call the work behind the work day which entails um auditions reading scripts, having meetings um, with my agent. My main agent is in New York. And so having meetings and just doing really everything that you do running a business, you know, the marketing side of things and, you know, if there's interview requests and all of that. And then the actual work is when you're working on projects. So right now I'm working on a project, but I signed an NDA, so I'm not able to actually discuss it. Um, but I can say that I've just finished an animation film. I did the voiceover for, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, I love doing voiceover. And yeah, so it's really, I mean, is that clear? Yeah, so it really is those two types of days. So if I'm going to set, for example, um, you know, the call time is usually early, so it can range from anywhere from 5 a.m. to like 8, 9, or if it's a night shoot, you know, obviously later in the day. And, you know, you'll go to set and then, uh, depending on the job, I mean, if it's, if it's a voiceover, you're going into the studio. So it's actually yeah. really nice because it's just all about the voice. And I love mm. that. Um, yeah. And... You know, and then you're, you're on set and then you're going to wardrobe, you're going to hair and makeup. And then, you know, it's a lot of, um, I was going to say hanging around, hanging around. It's, you know, working on material while you're waiting um, to go actually on camera. Yeah. Sure. And the days, yeah, the days are long. I mean, the days, you know, can be like 18 hour days, actually, I've had before. Wow. Yeah, so there, it's really intense. And then, you know, the work behind the work is is intense too. You know, it's it's a lot of reading, um, you know, a lot of negotiating on your agent's part. And, yeah, just, just working on your brand essentially, the same as any company. It's that same, you know, approach. Yeah, so like when I, you know, really excited about Dubai, for example, because it's just expanding me to another audience Mm. you know That's exciting yeah it is <laughs> it is yeah okay so you said you just finished the film what uh, is there a planned release date yet or is it a bit too early yeah it's a bit too early we literally just wrapped um like okay. about a week ago so yeah i have nothing that i can share but i can absolutely mm -hmm. update you <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll link to your Instagram and in the show notes so people can follow you and find out um, what the latest is. Yeah, I would love that. Exactly. I mean, I use my Instagram to like just share, um, you know, everything that I'm up to and also, you know, some behind the scenes and all of that good stuff. Yeah. And to awesome. connect with people. Yeah. Awesome. 
Yeah. Thanks ever so much, Emma. And um, we will um, we'll keep an eye on your next project. And um, yes. can't wait to Please. find out what the one with the NDA is because that's um, it's a, yeah, that's going to tantalising. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. I can't wait to share it, and it's it's really actually difficult not to talk about it. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, you want, yeah, it's really you must be so excited, yeah. and and yet you're not allowed to tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I'm yeah, I'm super excited, and um, yeah. It's, it's so where where do people find you on on socials? We'll link anyway, but where where are you? Yeah, I mean, I'm really you know what I really only instagram is what i'm using um yeah i like instagram i like you know how it works um i'm not a tiktok person <laughs> well, enough, neither are we no oh really yeah i know i'm like you know instagram instagram is good that's i can deal with that that's fine <laughs> yeah so really instagram yeah yeah um yeah and i mean i will you know once i'm allowed to share like you know the when there's a trailer and everything i mean i will share that and where people can see it and all of that good stuff so really instagram is the place to you know follow what i'm up to what i'm working on yeah excellent we will do that vegan stories (laughs) vegan adventure yeah (laughs) yeah that's it lovely all right well thank you so much emma for joining us yeah, that's thank been, you, Emma. Uh, that's been really fantastic. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. And thank you for what you're doing and putting out in the world. It's been a real joy to talk with you guys. That was a great chat. It, it was, was nice. Good, uh, it was lovely. Good getting someone young on as well. Yeah, because we're old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just bring the demographic down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, yeah, very, so yeah, very interesting. Yeah, completely. That was all good. That was all good. Yeah. All right. And then we, we were discussing, um, just to bring the mood down. <laughs> we, start, we started off low and we fin- we finished low as well. It's like um, the opposite of a shit sandwich. It's uh, yeah. yeah we were discussing, or I brought it up, that plant based news have just today said something about. Um, hundreds of climate scientists predict global heating of at least two and a half percent before the end of the century, which is something to look forward to. Mm. Is it? Is it though? No? Yeah, well, it's, it's bad times. I mean, for our well, for our kids, it will be warmer than it is for us, and for their kids, it will be the breakdown of humanity. <laughs> yeah. So as they get as they come into the world, we that like our kids can like show their kids apocalyptic movies and say, "This is what you've got to look forward to, kids." Ah, oh. welcome, welcome to the world. Welcome this to is the world what, is this is, what, this is what your grandparents and their ancestors made happen. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the party. Yeah, but you know we live in hope every time, every day, every hour. Yeah, do we? Yeah, we do, we do. I mean, like, we're at the stage now when we're looking at, uh, especially us in the UK, mm. well, sort of great-grandparents and, and, and even further back, um, we're having to deal with some of the impacts of the empire. Yeah. Um, And now our sort of similarly distant offspring will be having to deal with the impact of burning oil burning coal burning gas yeah killing billions of got, animals every it's year like that old um that old um i guess was it a proper it wasn't propaganda was it It was the war advertisement in the second world war wasn't it what did grand, grandpa what did you do during the war yeah and, you know it'll be gra- grandpa what did you do when you realized the earth was about to get destroyed well we tried yeah, yeah, Grandpa. What did you do when Greta no spoke? Yeah, what did you do when people were saying go vegan? Oh, I said, but bacon though on Facebook. <laughs> and I said, I said, I eat twice as much meat to to count what you're not eating. <laughs> oh dear! Oh. Thanks for listening, everyone. People are assholes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> People are the worst. <laughs> anyway, on that bombshell. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks very much for listening. And don't forget what we said at the start. Please, if you've got any tips or comments regarding how to how to get the message through to teenagers, that would be awesome. How to get the message through to teenagers who don't listen, who Jeez. aren't willing to listen, and some I mean, of them who, who listen but can't comprehend reality yeah. because of... I mean, my, mine don't listen when I say, can you put your washing away? So no. how are they... Uh, you know, It's going to have to be a great thing that gets them to listen to yep. go vegan. But... We're we're, we're open vegan. we're open to suggestions, and we're not perfect, but we are not pervy perfect vegans. No, we, we are go. doing our best, and every day we do our best. Don't we? Exactly. Oh, but let's love ourselves. If we take a message out of today's podcast, what Emma yes. said is very important. Love yourselves because loving yourselves helps you love everybody else. Love it, love it, brilliant. Thanks very much, everyone. See you next time. See you soon.